Good morning, Joe. Hello. Wait. Oh, now again. Hey, what's up? How are you doing? Great, doing great. Uh, uh, we got feeling good today. And I got this song stuck in my head from yesterday. But, uh, <laughs> why are you feeling so good? Uh, just another day, I guess. And I do like a discovering new songs. I found this song yesterday night, like before going to bed, and I'm like, oh, fuck, this is when I guess. And I'm like, ah, you know what? That's good. That's good. It got stuck in my head. I woke up singing it. <laughs> what, uh, what do you play? What, do, what instruments do you play? Uh, I don't play instruments, although I like to double with the piano a little bit, just enough to uh, make sense out of what I'm uh, pushing. You know, like, da, da, da. No, no, I'm just kidding. I like to memorize songs and then play them. Never been too much of a musician, although I wanted to. More of a, an avid music listener. Like, uh, the song I found yesterday is from this artist that has barely any followers on uh, Spotify. She's an Italian artist, but oh my God, that voice. It's like, you just get looped in and you, you just start enjoying it. Um, hey, JJ. Hey, what's going on? It's How are you, man? Nice, not much. We were just talking about this new song I discovered. Oh, you got a puppy in the back? Look at that. It's like, bring your own son to work here. Yeah. Oh, you oh, got to cool. work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Joe, where, Joe, where are you, Joe? Oh, my God. Th this, is, this is a work in progress. This is my, my office uh, studio. It's under construction. <laughs> oh, <laughs> messy headspace. You, you, you got to fix that up. Yeah, I'm getting there. It's just the time, man. No time. No time. Makes sense. Uh, but yeah, by the way, we're waiting on Michael to join the goal. He said he was using the bathroom real quick. Uh, and no, no, you're not. Wait, I'm on Google. Yeah, of course. Uh, zoom, zoom. Up. Yeah, I saw that. I was I was looking in the I was in the Google room and I saw, I saw the uh, other link. I saw. All right. Now I was actually debating with Michael just one minute ago. I'm like, did. And now I'm thinking, okay, we're going to use Google Meets because, uh, or else someone is going to miss or go one side or the other. And he said, oh, no, we mentioned Zoom on the on the email. Let's use Zoom. So I kind of changed it last minute. That's on me. Also, okay, now what's the, what's the meeting number? Because I'd rather go on my iPad. It's asking for the meeting ID. I can't seem to find it. I don't know. I don't think there is one. I think if you click there, like meeting ID, is, it's asking for a meeting ID. What? Okay. I was just going to try to go directly to the app. To... Let me see. Okay, that's fine. All right, it's cool. How do I pull up the meeting ID? All right, I got fine. Yeah, usually there is a like a meeting ID and all that stuff, but I don't. I'm not. I don't see it on the email at all. Or the link. Yeah, just the 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 invite that I copied and pasted. It just gave gave me the link. But okay, let's see. I have the I have a meeting passcode. Is that what you need? Um, I need. Yeah, I think I will need that for the second thing. But I need a meeting ID first. Meeting the profile picture. Oh, so Michael is joining. Okay, let me find this meeting ID as Michael joins. Also, heads up, I'm recording the conversation because I don't know, I got a feeling it's going to be an important one. Uh, I like to record the conversations that uh, might yield good questions or things that we could need in the future. But hey, Michael. Sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. Oh, it's a new haircut. Uh, Thanks. Do you know how I can find the meeting ID, Michael? The meeting ID. Yeah. To the. Well, it might be a new meeting since you're the host now, so I actually don't know. Uh, yeah, but is there a location where you just find the meeting ID on Zoom? I'm seeing, because uh, there used to be a, a some sort yeah, of- Yeah, hit, hit the eye on the top left. Eye on the top left? I'm talking eye on the top left. On desktop, 96077. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Good call, good call. We got a little green shield. Uh, JJ, where would you uh, like me to uh, uh, post this? A chat on this Zoom or send it via email? Uh, yeah, you could you could send it here. That's cool. Passwords nine nine two five one five also. Or you could just read it to me. Do you want to read it to me? Yeah, let's do that. It's uh, let me know when you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. 
So 960 yeah. 7794 okay. 3891. Okay, I'm going to hit join. It's probably going to ask me for the password. Yeah, what's the passcode now? 992515. Cool. All right, awesome. Let's see. Admit. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, reverb. Three, two. No, no reverb. Cool. Can you see? Me? Can you see me? Oh yes. Perfect. All right. <laughs> Expecting that like uh, screech down the reverb when you connect to uh to devices. Yeah, you hear right. the feedback loop. <laughs> exactly the feedback loop, man. Every time it just blows your head like. <laughs> but, all right. Yeah. Um, did you guys get a chance to uh, read the piss deck? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So, what do you think? What uh, what, what popped up? Any uh, any good feedback? Bad feedback? Anything you didn't understand? JJ, do you want to? Talk? Would you like to start? Or... No. Um, you can, Joe, if you want. All right, well, I mean, basically, uh, to keep it real short, it's awesome what you guys are doing. Um, it just it hits us like right here because it's very similar to what we were doing back in the day and um, you know you guys have just a little bit of a different twist on it which is really cool and more modern um, mm -hmm. with the crowdsourcing but I mean this is something that in my opinion is super challenging but if you could break through this is definitely something that I think could be huge huge it's, it's just going to the persistence. Like, I don't know where you guys are at in the chain of in, in, in um, acquiring any funding or anything like that. But I know like, um, I don't know how much of our story, you know, but that's kind of like where we bottlenecked a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, generally it looks awesome. Uh, I mean, we, I can speak for JJ too. We like what you guys have here. Um, Definitely. Yeah. It's really cool. really cool. Sounds great. I appreciate the feedback. Short and concise. Um, uh, as for what you said, no, we don't know much, too much about your story, although I did, did Google both names. Uh, but Tony uh, told us a little bit, but not much. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, um, so I, I would say, let me just uh, answer, answer that question of uh, the bottleneck you described and uh, give you a couple of different aspects of where the business is at right now and why we do think that we can tackle uh, the, the challenge, because I do understand it's a huge challenge. but. Despite, uh, besides being fun, um, we also got everything in place in order for us to tackle it. And then I would love to hear your story and how like any any other challenge you might have encountered when you tried the similar project and what it was about, what the differences were. Uh, but okay, so let me give you a couple of uh, like some information. When it comes to uh, so first thing the first thing and then the funding part. When it comes to uh, why we think we can tackle this, well, first of all, it's uh, technology uh, like the technology level that we can reach. Um, a CTO just joined the team, and this guy has released twenty apps in the past, joined multiple companies, gets gets contracted by huge businesses, and he has about twenty five years of experience as a CTO and a team of sixty developers. Uh, which right now we're not using all 60. We're using a couple of them because of the funding we have available through bootstrapping. Because although he's a, a team member, the team uh, needs to be paid, like the contractors need to be paid. With that said, once we have uh, funding to add to it, uh, we, we have a platoon, an army of uh, incredible technological uh, like developers uh, and the front-end designers and marketing people uh, through our CTO. Uh, they worked in blockchain, which is one of the aspects that are going to go into these algorithms uh, of uh, prediction of value for, for the talent of the artists, for impact for the listeners so that we may rank everyone and we can create the structures of value and influence uh, that incentivizes fans to really work for the artist, kind of. Uh, but yeah, sort of. Uh, so go out there and scout the artists as soon as possible. Um, then other than that, a couple of other key team members that might be like, okay, this, this could be challenging for the app you're building. Uh, and this is how we tackle it. We have, um, a data scientist in the team, um, with which I structured an algorithm of, uh, determination of talent that we call the NAC value, uh, through every metric of a platform, we connected the API so that an artist uh, logs in, connects the platforms. 
and then everything gets done automatically. And the data scientist uh, just put together the structure through logarithms and percentiles, although we kind of go away from that approach. I don't know if that rings any bell, if you ever tried anything similar to, the, to this value. Uh, then other than that, we just have regular team members like a COO, which is uh, an operations officer, just because uh, I feel like I need that. Um, then CFO in charge of finances, uh, a legal advisor, used to be a legal officer, but right now it's transitioning to advisor. So we do have the legal structure in place to make sure that, okay, what happens if Spotify gets pissed and wants to kick us off, can they? Well, no. Um, Spotify, Apple Music, all of these different platforms to their APIs. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now, with the team out of the way, um, vision-wise, there's a couple of different aspects, like different angles and ways in which we can, and we walked through this minefield uh, that is the music world, in case you want to introduce anything new to it. And uh, we found ways to just create this uh, incentivized market of rewards, sort of, sort of market at some point, without ever crossing boundaries with SEC, which is pretty monumental as a move. Um, and by using and making use of this NFT structures, I don't know if you guys are familiar with blockchain at all. Let me start from there before I dive any deeper into it. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Um, so for you, JJ, um, I mean, uh, just very brief understanding of blockchain. Blockchain is a technology that doesn't need to be, uh, it's, it's a sort of technology that allows you to just uh, automate any process of interaction between one person and another, or a, a member of an organization or a member of an ecosystem where let's say that member one says, uh, or uh, has an account and says, oh, I have this many points, this many, this much influence. Uh, all of this data in, uh, in a life system would have to be categorized by the platform itself. So we would have the power to say, Ooh, it's more beneficial for this month to make more money. Just push this little button and then the numbers change and we control everything. On a blockchain system, this cannot be done. Everything is completely out of our control, as in it's completely transparent to the public, as well as managed by the system itself. So the technology is running the numbers here, uh, which creates a much better interaction for the artists and they know that it's a, it's a place they can feel safe in. Uh, and then there's also like uh, other huge aspects to it that allow us to go further faster, but this is just the base of it. Um, with that said, our CTO actually uh, develops uh, blockchain systems, and that's why I brought this up in the first place. Um, and as for vision, it's just like we found ways to make things happen that were not possible or were tried by other platforms, but they kind of always overstepped either as to see boundaries or uh, viral boundaries that start to push a new culture to the public of listeners or to the musicians. I feel like, and we can talk a bit more about it, uh, about our roadmap, but the new roadmap is pretty impressive. Like there's not a single person I spoke to that doesn't say, ooh, this is interesting. Um, now, as for funding, so this is the part that uh, we're struggling with a little bit. But um, as of now, there's three aspects to our funding. The first one is bootstrapping. So we put our own money as much as we felt like inv investing as founders. Um, so I also invest uh, on the side for a living a percentage of my capital, um, but stuck next to me is the company with most potential. Uh, and I mean, kind of, I, I do have a bias, but um, I do think that this is, uh, I'm, I'm impressed with what we have been able to achieve with so little. And that's why like, I think I put along the years about 30 to $35,000 in the company. Uh, then the other two founders put together around another 20, $25,000 in the company. And we do have all the financials and all the boring stuff written somewhere. But uh, so that's how we financed the first two years of company, considering that we restarted develop a development recently because we had problems with uh, our old development team uh, and they were making some mistakes that would have had to be changed in the future. So we decided to just restart, would have costed us less money and less time. Then the second aspect is money that we have available in terms of, okay, it's, it can't come. It's just a matter of, uh, we just have to choose or something needs to happen. And that is friends and family. We have about $50,000 uh, committed from friends and family members uh, for that commitment, uh, something needs to happen. Our offering page needs to be live. We have decided to take the approach of uh, equity crowdfunding so that the friends and family that invest in the business 
actually own a piece of this. Because the main reason why we want them, uh, like we're, we're saying, or you know, we're pushing this investment to them, or they, if, if they want to invest, is like, we appreciate you as an early believer, and we would like you to have a piece of the business instead of just a, a loan, a friends and family loan. So that structure took a bit, but we're about a week to two weeks away from having this offering live through Net Capital. The third aspect is the investor aspect. Now, along the years, um, we, sp we spoke to uh, multiple investors uh, that were interested in the, in the platform. Uh, there were two problems and the reason why we still haven't raised any funding. Um, and we, we got to put the, the uh, pushing the gas pedal on stall, although we're still running, um, but we have much higher capabilities and we're being uh, uh, refrained by funding. The reason why we haven't uh, raised uh, big investments yet is for two reasons. Number one, back in the day, I'm talking about a month ago, uh, maybe two months ago, uh, I was a younger CEO. I was trying the wrong approach. We were uh, being promised by the developers that the app wouldn't have the problems that it had. And therefore, I was never like, okay, uh, we can't raise investments yet. We first want to show that because it's a matter of personal security. I want to know that the person investing is actually investing in something solid and not just a dream or a schmuck. Uh, so we stalled investments for a very long time because that wasn't happening. Then uh, once the transition happened uh, and now we have the CTO that released uh, the, the 20 apps in the app store and worked with uh, multiple other apps that released and uh, even went, I think he, had, he has a couple of apps that went IPO. Um, so now we know for sure. The investors we spoke to since then, um, the, uh, we filtered a lot of the investors we ever spoke to before, simply because before we were just talking to anyone. Now we're focused on two types of people, two types of investors. Investors that understand the music business and not just the money business, because at the end of the day, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is not going to be a net, pro net positive profitable in the next six months. It's, it's going to be according to our uh, timeline and the roadmap and the way in which we have structured our financial plan. We are going to be profitable within the first year, but that's not going to be net positive. So the investor isn't going to see a, a return in dividends uh, very soon. And therefore, we want you to be here for the mission, not for the money itself, or else you're going to have to wait longer. And then you're going to you're going to be pissed off and then you're going to piss us off because you're going to want us to push on the wrong angles of the platform, which is the money one. That's not what we're trying to do. So we filtered a lot of the investors. The second thing is uh, we filtered by investors that understand that are okay with understanding different concepts and structures. Like we're not saying people that are expert in blockchain, but we spoke to some investors in the past few days that are like, oh yeah, that, this sounds great. I still listen on uh, to music on CDs uh, only is that uh, uh, good. Like we would rather have someone that I'm not saying technologically savvy, uh, but uh, at the end, like at least open to uh, studying and uh, understanding the streaming market online. And then, um, so we filtered a lot of the investors we were speaking to. And then the third angle is we have a, a couple of investors uh, already that said, listen, I want to invest. I think this is a great project. Uh, um, I actually love the angle you're taking, but I'm afraid that you might not be able to execute. So what they wanna see is other investors that invested first. So right now we're in this like it's this first jump where it's like okay we got to find the first pers person that doesn't need approval from another investor um, to uh, choose to be the first. So that's where we are right now. Big bubble, bubble a lot, but I hope you have a bigger picture. But, well, Julia, we it's funny because JJ and I would go to the the, the Hudson Valley um, Investor Network pitchathons through Tony, and I remember specifically I remember just being there and everyone had their high round table. And, Nobody's coming over to us. You know, it says music technology, lead pedal, um, it's not <laughs> called lead pedal music. So we started engaging people and the, the common thing was, you know, eat more d'oeuvres and like, yeah, we're, we're giving our quick pitch. Like we think we're killing it. They're looking around. Yeah, I got a friend who does that. I got a friend who invests in that. Yeah, I'll let you know. See you later. Like, <laughs> every you nailed the face on that one, dude. <laughs> yeah, every, every single time they hear music and they go the other way. But what we learned is that it's because they don't understand it they're scared of it they're just scared because they don't they they don't see all they hear is you know from other investors how spotify is constantly losing money and how they're constantly looking to pay more artists artists are looking for more money so it seems like a money pit but the reality is it's not you know there's a lot of money to be made it's just how in my opinion 
how are they going to how are they going to evolve? And that's where everybody gets left behind. Is the way you guys are, seem to be set up is very similar to the way we were from a business standpoint. We were a long tail uh, economic business too, set up to just capitalize on underneath the uh, the tip of the iceberg, like you guys have it. And um, that that's where to be. That's where to be because, like you said, you found an artist online when you were listening last night, and, and you know that artist had a song that caught you. And there's so many artists out there like that. I mean, JJ and I can, you know, we've been playing in bands together for years. We're in, we're in bands now, separate bands, and we know a, a network of musicians. And we hear some stuff, and we've, J, I mean, JJ himself has songs that I could recall from 2000. You know that that just still stick with me, and I'm like, man. If we just had the platform to get recognition for this one song, we'd be made in the shade. We'd be, we would have been on Billboard. And that, that's just our story, you know? Like, imagine how many songs like that we feel like we've accrued over the past 20 years. Yeah. Crazy. Now, now how many artists just in the Hudson Valley or New York in general are there with similar talent, better talent, bigger catalogs of music? I mean, this is a like an untapped, like, like, um, gold mine you know what i mean in terms of talent where that you can harness and bring into your community so that was my next question how do you plan on getting these artists to your community yeah great question um so i'm gonna give you a little bit of feed a little bit of the roadmap here I, uh, I it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna help with the conversation but i would say if we dig it into another, another conversation the roadmap i'll detail it much more after an nda and uh exactly yeah but for now, this is uh, this is the plan. Uh, we were at the beginning. We were planning on starting from artists. So we start from artists, and then we say, "Okay, great, invite your friends over." It's like, "Oh wait, we invite one, and they might invite ten thousand. That sounds like a great deal." The problem is, inviting an artist to a non-preformed community, it's almost like calling people to, uh, people to your restaurant, and you don't have the food yet. So what we decided to do is uh, change the roadmap around and start from the involvement from the community. It mentions, it mentions it briefly in the pitch deck, but the way that we go about it, about it is step one, we don't focus on artists at all. Uh, we just focus on listeners. So we have created, and this is what the first prototype is going to be, and it's going to come out in four weeks according to the timeline from the new CTO. Um, it's, it's a social network. It's a social platform where you enter, you connect to uh, your, uh, your uh, premium uh, streaming profile, and all of a sudden, Stocknack uh, can become your uh, music uh, streaming player. So it, it's, uh, it's like the same thing as your Spotify, but then what are the incentives? Why would you use this rather than Spotify itself? Well, what we have created on this social network is uh, interactions that are between people. It's not just you're listening to music individually, there's different ways in which you can create a group chat with people of different uh, or, or different, not, not different, different people with similar musical tastes, uh, whether it's your friends or uh, in a bit, we're going to add the public chat. So you can join people that seem to be matching the musical taste that seems to be represented by the music you have saved. And therefore, now you get suggested people, you enter different group chats, you create your own group chats. And on here, it's uh, as smooth as butter to just share a lot of music and uh, get a lot of music and in a chat 50 people share their 50 best songs you press the play button and play all of them together or filter them by best based on the reactions that they got so we created this social community aspect to the listener that can now start interacting with music online which is something that it's not there yet like there, there is nothing out there like there is one alternative iMessage you send, the, you send the link and then you open the link and go on the other side. The process there is if I want to share a song on Spotify, I got to press a button, scroll down, press another button, click the copy link, exit the platform, enter the platform I want to share to, select the person I want to share it to, paste the link, hit send. The stock nugget is you're playing, yeah. the music player recognizes that you're playing, you press the share button, select the different groups or friends that you want to send it to and send it to them. And then you can get reactions, which is another thing. It's like the incentive of dopamine that will make, and we have tested uh, through the, the different means, but uh, the incentive of dopamine from getting you <laughs> like when some people could have liked to a song that I shared, man, it feels good. It's like, 
uh, I don't think I think it feels much better than even a like on Instagram or a follow on Instagram. Like that to me at the beginning didn't really hit, and then it started hitting later on because I was told that it's I'm supposed to like it. I get to be happy about likes and follows, but it's different with music. When someone likes your music, they like you. They they, they like your your brain. They they like your creativity. They they like a song. They they like this experience that you shared with them. You were talking about a crude before, as if music is an asset, and that's how I see it. And that's the, that's what we're into including in this community at the beginning. So then, after we have tackled listeners and we've created uh, this community aspect that makes people call other people, uh, this is phase one, and there's different aspects, but this is the tip of it. Uh, after phase one, what happens is in phase two is not artists yet, but in here, we're going to start accessing the connections that we've already developed uh, to connect to artists throughout the years. So we have a partnership lined up as in as soon as we are ready, they are ready uh, with World Artists United. They have thousands of artists under the, their belt that they help. They're an entrepreneurship, music entrepreneurship club. Uh, they uh, create, they have events in New York, huge event uh, coordinator, um, coordinators. So it's two people, uh, Rachel and Jalen. And they have access to a, a very many artists and connections. They're actually right now, they're partnered with Jerry Wanda. I don't know if you know who he is, but um he's the person that blew up um what's her name shakira uh, and she, he works with j-lo and all of these people so we have access to that we have access to a few other people that uh created different social uh communities uh, with artists such as a platform is uh, core the core is just a social media they have a few thousand followers uh, just are like they, they just show emerging artists um, and with them we already spoke as soon as we have the platform available uh, the CEO of the platform said listen I would love to contribute to whatever you're doing and get everyone on my network to also join because I see how this could be beneficial for them so we have that lined up and on top of that we also plan on using some of the money we get from funding which is part of where we spend our budget is going to be through, uh, to, uh, towards sponsorships because at the end of the day, we kind of want to support our own artists. We do it through the platform so that basically the sponsorship also gives us an influence value, which is cool to show later on, shows the public that we put our money where our mouth is. Uh, but in this phase two, the biggest change as we're reaching these connections, before we call the artists to the platform, we're incentivizing uh, everything by including this uh, the, the rankings. So in phase two, we include points related to the interactions you have as a listener. So now the listeners that have created communities just for the sake of uh, sharing and listening to their own best, to their, uh, to each other's best songs, which by the way is great because you'll be surprised how many, uh, two people with similar, with the same taste in music, they'll know thousands of different songs. Like I've been testing this ad with different friends that have been sharing music in the past couple of weeks, mostly, but before always. Um, two people with identical tastes of me in music, they will know Two different sets of beautiful music that they both love and they just don't know it so what we do after is now that we have created this vitamin like uh, thing that you just do daily sharing music listening to music we incentivize it so that some people may rise above the rest and become influencers how they get points for every time they, they like they share they discover a song uh, the lower the rank of the artist that you discovered the song from the more points you would get it's sort of like that. There's a different mechanism there that is a bit smarter than that, but this is the easier way to explain it. And then we bring, uh, bring the artists on board so that now the artists that we bring, people are incentivized to go out there and as soon as possible, scout them and help them. So if you bring in artists that are from a lower level mm -hmm. and you're a major influencer and then that artist all of a sudden catapults to having a lot of listens, does that add to the point system for that particular list uh, person who brought that artist to the table? Is that kind of how it works? Or yeah, all right. I, I can push the vision a little bit more because you're, you're you're getting it all right. So yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, it multiplies what's what's uh, what their point is. So okay, you get ten points in uh, Drake, and Drake is already at a thousand. That's it. I get 10 points in uh, Baby No Mula and he just started and he's, uh, his knock level, uh, knock value is one. And then it goes to 10, you get 100 points. 
Yeah, and also just the last one right there, the artist. I don't know if you know who Baby No Money is, do you? Uh, say that again. I'm sorry. My There's an artist. Sorry, my uh, my connection might be a little off, but um, Baby No Money is an artist who uh, Julio just mentioned, and uh, he's he went pretty much viral recently in the past like two years, and we actually have a personal connection to him, um, and that's one of the investors that are, we're actually going to be targeting as well uh, from an artist standpoint to get people that are I guess like have a lot of capital that are in the space right now. Um, that's like someone else that. A lot of investors love to hear that. That's what we've figured out too, as you guys mentioned earlier. It's just like, oh, who else is investing? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we have contact with this guy. I just he just mentioned that, so I wanted to uh, butt in and let you guys know that as well. Yeah. And also, to add to the that part of the, our part of the conversation, it's like Baby Nomula is one of the reasons why this structure became the way it is. Because uh, Michael and I and the other co-founder, we were listening to Baby Nomula before he had, he had listeners, like. I started listening to him in 2017. He released Politics with another artist. And I'm like, this guy's good. I started listening to him. And then you just see him blow up. And that's exactly like the, what you're saying. is like this influencer status. Like you recognize talent early. Don't just be the consumer of this business. Start producing, like scouting artists. And then you can get a rank yourself. Like uh what joe was saying before is like oh we discovered artists early it's not just a matter you don't just get rewarded you get rewarded more if you discover them earlier and then they end up blowing up not only do you get rewarded more you get recognized more because publicly you have a rank that is higher than everyone else not only publicly do you get a rank on this artist's community you have a rank that's that specifies exactly the impact you've had on where the artist is right now compared on where he was when you first joined and then multiplied by how much the artist grew in this time span. And then the artist sees that, the community sees that and the artist can reward you personally and the community can just look up to you for new songs. So yeah. That's a right. major hot button to get, to get fans in is telling them like you have, you, you have the ability to make this artist, not just by telling your friend on the street, like you can literally do it right here and be recognized for it. Most diehard music fans, which there's, there's so many, that's just uh, to me like that's just like the icing on a cake and people are going to go nuts for that i think yeah and um, you're talking icing on the cake let's start let's talk cherry on the cake what happens the first time the artist decides to go ballistic with it and you get the first travis scott that knows exactly who his number one fan first fan or most influential fan was and then he blows up like and then the first Lambo flies out to one of his fans or the first backstage ticket or the first inviting to a concert or a or on a stage at home. On yeah. stage, bring him out on stage, right? Exactly, <laughs> like at that point, that, that's, I, I get the, the chills with the goosebumps when I talk about this stuff, but I know at some point this is gonna happen. One artist is gonna open the gates. Once the gates get open and we, we start feeding the artists with different ways of rewarding, like the NFTs and that's all, Oh my God, a masterpiece, a masterpiece of business is our NFT phase. But yeah, exactly. You bring a fan to stage, everyone sees that this is the benchmark that you can reach and they start competing to become the number one fan. How do you become number one fan? You either discover extremely early. So maybe we gotta, uh, maybe I gotta discover new artists that are not, not discovered yet so that I can uh, get, get that clout. Or you can uh, support more consistently and more often. Or I can just give a shit ton more money altogether by buying whatever I can buy and then just rank up. So yeah, gamification, the gamification aspect will, once the gates are unlocked. Cool. So um, part of our business model was also um, having fans, once the artists are established, obviously, um, having fans, like we're in the creative process, Joe and I, we're writing our own music, all that stuff. So we actually, we thought as far as like the artist goes throwing out there a version or like a demo of a song and then asking feedback on what would make the song better or you know basically like do you like this chorus versus that chorus and then the artist can change it in the studio before it becomes mastered and finalized sort of thing. so that kind of, kind of having that feedback loop was part of our business model do you want to elaborate joe or to oh, get no. that no, I was going to say it was uh, they may have that baked into their platform already. You know, yeah. Where an artist, there's maybe a segment where uh, fans get involved early in the process. The artist kind of opens the door behind the curtain for when they're writing. Like JJ said, we that was a part of what we were doing. And 
honestly, I had mixed feelings about that at the time as being an artist and a fan of music, meaning like as an artist, like I have an ego. I don't, I don't, I want to write my chorus. I don't want my fan to write my chorus. You know what I mean? But then again, maybe there is that special circumstance, depending on the type of artist that says, I'm not going to do this every time, but maybe I will write a song where I, where I source creativity from my fans. So, you know, I don't know if you guys have something like that and you know, don't feel obligated to tell us that's fine. We're, um, we're, we're kind of an open book right now. There are some things that we probably won't wouldn't disclose with that NDA too. Um, but we're out of the game. Just we're, so you know. we're 100% an open book too. It's just NDA is just the type of stuff is like the boring stuff behind the curtain that I'm like, I'm refraining myself from talking about it or else I start diving into stuff that is not, it's not going to fuel the conversation or at least the introduction one. But other than that, the front of it, anything you can see, man, like I enjoy talking about it with people that understand and they're for like, this is what I can tell you about what you said. Um, the way that we have this in plan, there's a couple of different layers, but these are, are the few that I like the most regarding this fan interaction and the usefulness that it can have on the song itself. So the way that I was picturing it, but it can be done in some sort of way where maybe there's a poll, like this beat or that beat or this or that. Although it's kind of, it's not going to be used too much because, again, artists are jealous of their creation and their brain says something too specific for anyone else to kind of be right on it. With that said, though, the artist could be posting a clip on his uh, VIP chat, which might be just the first 100 fans compared to the general chat where he has access to everyone else to let them know about concerts and tours. But on this VIP chat, he might be able, he might be releasing a little clip of a song that he's working on. He's like, hey guys, the song is coming out in uh, next month. What do you think? And then that can not, not necessarily be a thing where like, hey, tell me uh, how to modify it. It's more like, you know, a little bit of pre-hype. It's like, oh my God, I absolutely love it. Uh, oh, this, this sound seems uh, like, have you tried adding this thing? Because artists can connect to other artists too. But then there's an aspect to it that I really, really like that it kind of bridges. It's a bridge to somewhere else, but uh, similar to what you were saying. If I'm a fan of yours and uh, of JJ, let's say you have two separate artists, and I'm number one fan for JJ, and JJ is absolutely huge. The fact that I'm number one fan, I have an influential status where I can propose a collaboration. So maybe I hear this clip of your song, and I say, hmm, you know who you should try to mix this with? JJ. I'm like, let me hook you up because I'm number one fan and therefore my, my collaboration request is going to pop up at the very top and then I can make this collaboration happen. So I would say that's more of a way in which fans can play a role as to what music gets created more than modifying the piece itself, connecting to different voices, to different vibes. And then and imagine this, like I connect you to and then you guys make a song and I'm the one that proposed it and I get points from it and I get rewarded and I get to listen to a song that I basically just shaped in my head a connection that I shaped in my head, and then I, I can listen to it, to it as like listener's wet dream. I don't know, but like it's <laughs> that would really that would really make me happy. That's a and then there's this one. Yeah. <laughs> listener's wet dream. Yeah. Um, cool. Like uh, there's so there's so many similarities between what you're doing yeah. and and what we were trying to do, just even at a top level view and. Uh, there are some differences, you know, I mean, just to high, real, just real quick to highlight some of the differences, because we, at the time, you're talking 2000, what, JJ, 2007, 2000, no, no, 2010. Was it? yeah, 2010, yeah, 2010, you know, NFTs weren't a thing, blockchain wasn't a thing, um, so, but we had, we had stuff that could be, we, we have some cool ideas that we were working on that would be an NFT today that, you know, is unheard of. I'm sure somebody will have the idea for it eventually, but um, that maybe that's the topic for another conversation. But we had a couple of things baked into our uh, community that were gonna, that would be like the perfect NFT. Um, and the other thing was uh, I had it written down here, was uh, we were artist centric. We were we were all about we're gonna get the artists in here and coach them how to write, you know, help them, you know, market their stuff. So we'd have marketing experts, law experts, um, you know, songwriting teams, producers, engineers, all kinds of creatives ready to offer services to market to the artists for, you know, maybe some discounted prices or whatever um, to kind of like marry them in as well. You know, so we, we were, we were going to profit off of 
some of that as well. So we, we had like kind of a omnidirectional profit circle that we were going to take a little piece from everybody in, in a way. And, and connect yeah. everybody like you were talking about too. Right. So, so it's, it's kind of, it's, it's funny to hear it from like a more modern uh, you know, standpoint. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> You're going to love this. Uh, I'm about to, uh, cause I mean, I'm, I bet that you have different aspects of the connection that we probably didn't consider. And I would love to hear more about it. Cause I, the more we can feed into this, uh, the better. And also it, it's fun. Like uh, usually everyone that joins the platform, whether as an advisor or as just a voice, it's like, it multiplies like your thoughts and your ideas and the things that you know multiplied by the team and then the vision just becomes bigger than uh, the both of us could have thought of individually um so i 100 percent want to have a conversation about the like set the difference between this and what you guys had in mind to see if there's anything that we can just bring over to this digital side but for now something that you said that kind of triggered another thing that is possible with the algorithms we're building in the blockchain this is interesting. Okay, this is in theory and the and the productive. Fuck it. Um, so this is uh this is the thing, because when when we switched to artist centered and uh, at the end of phase two and before we entered the NFT phase, which is again always artist centered, but the NFT like after phase after the end of phase two, it becomes a mix where the listener and the artist are two parts of the same chart. That's the, hence the logo. If you see the logo, that's exactly what it is. You have the microphone and the shadow behind it having almost the same importance. Um, but anyway, so because the artist <laughs> we become artist-centered, that enters the platform and connects all of their different social media and streaming platforms. So they connect their Apple Music, they connect their Spotify, they connect their Tidal, their Amazon, their YouTube, their uh, Instagram, their TikTok, their uh, anything else that's out there. We have access to data, like so much data, like the data, we have access to as much data as every other label combined, plus more, because uh, I haven't seen anyone yet that is uh, combining the social aspect and the streaming aspect. Uh, so although the beginning that can just allow the artist to know himself and then to show his manager, which can connect to his profile and then label uh, that the platform has their own, they have their own incentives to be using the platform rather than not. Uh, but after that, what we start doing is all of these metrics and changes trigger different parts of our blockchain system, which start telling us with a specific amount of statistical error, what are the chances that this artist blows up? Like you start seeing things such as, uh, okay, great. Back in, uh, a year ago, this artist triggered this metric, this metric, this metric, this metric, this early. Uh, and it seems to be a trend. And other artists seem to be doing the same thing. Now there's a new artist that seems to have triggered the same metrics. This guy might actually blow up. What, are, what is the statistical chance that this guy blows up? This much. So at this point, not only can this serve as a great way for, um, like it's just something that the artist can use to study his own uh, platform, and we can start suggesting them like based on where they are and based on the level of their net value and the, the things that they're struggling with. We can suggest them educational content, which by the way, we also have connections on that. Uh, World Artists United, they partnered with a platform that is doing that, like tailored content based on each stage of an artist's career. So we can fuse those two things together so that the artist just gets an automatic message in the morning. It's like, hey, if you've been struggling with this issue, this is the best thing you can do about it. And the second aspect to that data that we uh, that we have would be for connections. Uh, we can either provide part of it on the platform so that labels may scout by filtering and find perfect artists to add to their network, uh, or we could sell that. We could sell that data and give a list to major labels of what artists are have the most potential of blowing up next. We can sell those lists or use them as a bargaining chip for uh, partnering. As right now, it's being done through word of mouth. <laughs> like this is like in 1950 we can change that we can change the scouting of potential made by the public not by us thinking that this guy's good it's like no the general public said this guy's good where have they said it every social media every streaming platform and our platform and then the last layer which is the one that i like the most is the one where okay now we know by knowing what do we want to do with it 
Do we want to sponsor specific artists? Do we want to um, create maybe our own label if we wanted to? Although I'm not a huge fan of that section, I would rather partner with a label that we believe in, that has good values that we believe in. Um, and then on top of that, um, maybe and this is another angle that one of my favorite ones. Maybe this doesn't only determine what artists have potential to potential to grow, but because of how the build the blockchain uh, system is built, also what listeners played the most roles platform wide, and we can start hiring the listeners as as talent scouts and creating that into a job or monetizing it. So yeah. It's just amazing to hear this because because um, when I tell you it's you just kind of subtract like just drop in a couple of different things in what you just said, and we were working on pretty much on the same thing, except it was on, it was on the song level and there was no blockchain. Our predictive analytics was with the, the IBM servers with working with Tony. Yeah, so when we got there, yeah. you know that's kind of like how we started. We knew we needed a predictive engine, and JJ yep. knew Tony from from a past life. He made the connection and we got into the Marist um, network that way. But the uh, everything you said right there is, you know, was pretty much like <laughs> what we were doing. On yeah, the it's, uh, it was like it was kind of eerie to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So like you're saying with the artist, like we were we were concentrating more on the song, though. Like what song is going to be a hit? Um, right. You know, we, we, we were we were going to have an engine that was like um, a predict uh, basically a hit predictor, we called it. And it was going yeah. to basically measure, it was a learning machine and it would learn what songs would be hits and, you know, and what determined, what determinations were made that would make it a hit and teach musicians how to write better songs that way and see what people are responding to as well. We were planning on having all that data and having it sit in, in a repository that we could then say, okay, we have all this information. We know what songs can hit. And, you know, who wants to partner with us now, you know, whether it's a major label or some other large music entity. Um, wow. It's like, it's, it's, it's amazing to see the parallels, you know, it's kind of flabbergasted right now. <laughs> Love that. but that's, that's now I understand why it's been so easy like to talk about, you know, the, the details. Cause a lot of times I don't like to get into details cause I'm just, I'm just wasting breath. In this case, in my, I feel like, okay, you guys are taking it. So I'm excited <laughs> of the fact that you're also uh, you also consider different algorithms because the structure of blockchain allows us to just plug and play whenever we want. And chances are, anything that can be plugged multiplies something else in the platform. I don't know why this is like kind of weird, but this is just how the music lounge works. Um, but now, okay, I'm liking this. I would say it's probably going to be a very interesting conversation when we talk about algorithms. I think that by now we know that this is kind of a mesh made in heaven. So let's uh, talk about how we could be working together and uh, what we could be doing to get this done and change the music world. Like we can turn this into an industrial revolution pretty easily. So uh, let's see. Well, yeah, what, uh, so like, what did you guys just to be, you know, completely open and transparent, like what did you guys come into the conversation like um, hoping to get out of it? So there's three aspects of the platform that right now uh, could use some help. Uh, the first one is funding. So the fund, although it's not, it's not in priority level, like the priority for me is a little different, but right now the thing that has the most, uh, it's like, okay, this can supercharge everything else would be funding. Uh, we were told by Tony, Tony said, okay, these are a couple of uh, the investors or uh, people that are not only involved in the music world, but uh, that also either uh, invest themselves or they uh, know people that, uh, that uh, invest. The second thing is advisorship and guidance. This is not because we're lacking any sort of guidance. What I've noticed uh, through the advisors that we have uh, in the platform right now, like on the team right now, uh, smart people usually multiply the whole vision. So anyone that has feedback to give or with which I enjoy conversating, um, that's the type of guidance I'm looking for. And then as for what I'm expecting from the guide, uh, it's just whatever the guide expect, whatever the guide, the guide in this case feels like bringing to the table, whether it's a conversation or an advice or a mistake that you spotted or just, uh, I don't know, uh, nothing or a connection or whatever. But anyway, that's the understanding. And then the last thing is when it comes to network, uh, networking, uh, so that we may, 
start talking to people that are more involved in the music world and shaping different angles of the platform on the, on the roadmap. So uh, we need people that, are, that uh, uh, know people in music or in business so that if at some point we, we say, okay, great, let's branch, let's branch into uh, record labeling, um, great. Um, maybe someone knows someone that might be able to uh, help on this. So that's the, the bubble of things that we stepped in for. No particular specific reason. We didn't know too much about you before this conversation, but those are the two. Cool. That sounds awesome. I mean, I don't know if, I mean, Joe and I have had a lot of uh, experience in the music business. I did work for major labels in New York City back in the 90s up to about 2000. So I worked for Atlantic Records, WIA Distribution, and then Mercury Records and TBT, which was the largest independent. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, so that's kind of what, how, what got Joe and I going on, not only playing in bands, being on the creative side, but also on the business side of things. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I love the music industry. Um, it just changed so dramatically that I, I want to... Um, I kind of want to interrupt the status quo, you know, that that's been our goal. I think the whole time is to, is to really disrupt the status quo. And I, I just don't necessarily like the decisions the music industry has taken. And I think it could be way better than it is. So it's kind of been it's always been my vision. Yeah. yeah it's uh, I mean, just to just give you a quick background for me too, like JJ said, we've, we've known each other for a long time, but um, I've, I've had a little bit of a tech background too, but not on the coding or any, not on like on that level, just more of like on, a, on an oversight level. Like I've managed uh, a, a customer service and repair department for a major electronics manufacturer. And um, I've always kind of been, and obviously being a musician, I've always kind of merged the two, like technology and music. And uh, that's, you know, what kind of led JJ and I down the, the path we took in, you know, doing our startup, which at the time we started as lead pedal music. And uh, with, with uh, when Tony came on board, we kind of changed, we changed the name a little bit and the vision. And uh, we were called Hit Moves at the time. Hit Moves? Hit Moves. Hit moves. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is the song-centeredness, okay. okay. Yeah, right. So, you know, and yeah, same, like, even though, like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm currently working, um, as a composer for, for Nickelodeon. So I'm doing music pretty much every day, but in the back of my mind is this kind of stuff is always, you know, floating, you know, like, because we still have some unfinished business um, to be completely transparent with you. I think the only thing JJ and I, I could speak for you, JJ, with the time thing. I think the yeah. only thing that, that is our biggest challenge right now is time because we both have families um, other commitments like work, like work commitments, but you know, something, you know, something like this, you know, I feel like, you know, we could, could, and, uh, we'll take it offline JJ, but like we could add value in some way, shape or form for sure. You know, and yeah. way, well, you know, we can, we can definitely discuss further and come back and meet with you guys another time. If you guys are interested. Absolutely. Um, uh, I would love to. I already know that like, there's, there's some things that tell me that this, like the, our interaction can really yield a lot. And not only to ourselves and what our plans are in life, uh, although it seems that, that we seem to have cross sections where it's not necessarily the money at the end of the tunnel, although that's a byproduct of uh, changing the world, but it's, it's the change that we're, we're seeking. And uh, so uh, I know things, uh, and, can really can, they can turn fun i'm gonna say it this way and as for the time why the time thing like again this is the business is running itself it doesn't need anyone to just like it doesn't need any brute for like any uh hands-on work um but yeah um, everything you said checks out are you guys doing this full time yeah yeah cool at least so the three co-founders do it full time the people that I mentioned as advice, uh, as uh, team members, uh, they are part time at it on the side as they support their living son, uh, in another way. But everyone in the uh, everyone that is a team member right now is willing to go full time as long as we can afford the wage. Um, 
And then who, the people that I mentioned as advisors, uh, it's not full time, it's not part time. There isn't a specific amount of time that you need to dedicate to this. Um, it's uh, they, they usually they show up to the Monday calls, which is just uh, the meeting where we just catch up with everyone. Um, but that's it's not mandatory for advisors, but recommended. Uh, and that's an hour a week. Then, yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's the structure of timing on there. Cool. That's and, cool. That sounds good. I like are that. Guys, are you guys co-CEOs? Uh, no. Uh, so I'm CEO. Michael is an advisor, uh, and he's, he's just uh, um, uh, he's bringing connections on board as an artist. I uh, just uh, yeah. These are my paintings in the back here. That's my main job right here. Is just a painter in New York City. And um, how I found out about Stockneck, I was at Baby No Money concert. The artist we uh, talked about, and my best friend went to high school with him. Uh, so he knew him before he was even like making music and um, he introduced me to him and then he blew up and so I went to his concert and I met Julio there and they were trying to pitch Stockknack to Baby No Money, the artist. And I overheard That's it. That's right. We were drinking beer with the guy. Oh, and the yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were at a bar after the concert with the artist talking to him. Yeah. They were pitching fun. And pitching to his manager as well. And um, I overheard it and I was like, that sounds interesting. And I have about like multiple years of entrepreneurship, social entrepreneurship to be exact. Uh, I did Global Center, Tony's uh, like uh, workshop for Global Center for Social Entrepreneurship Network. I did their boot camp, uh, their first boot camp in 2016. And at the time I was starting my own company called Easy Book uh, that was pretty much going to be a Craigslist marketplace on college campuses that were geofenced on the campus so you could you could like uh trust everyone you were dealing with um and and that kind of was going really well we were getting pretty far and then uh our main coder who did all the code got recruited by the fbi and we had no uh, cash to fund his life so he was like i have to go and so we were dead in the water and we were all about to graduate college all broke and it kind of just fell apart but the idea and the learning experiences were invaluable it, it was amazing um and that's kind of where i got my understanding of like where i fall into corporate culture is just connection connecting the right people to the right people um you know bigger picture things keeping the uh you're breaking up you know, awesome i hope we lost him yeah uh, my wi-fi is so bad i'm so sorry um you're back. can you hear me now yes yeah Yes. For real, so, yeah. Michael? As we wait for Michael's Wi-Fi to jump back on, uh, also a little, uh, it's not a, you don't call it an Easter egg. It's a little like, eh, just like fun fact, I guess. Uh, Michael is actually my way in the door for painting. Once, uh, once the platform uh, proves itself through music, uh, the, the structure is just set up for every other area of talent. Hence the main name, like the name of the umbrella company, Stock Knack, the market of talent. Um, and he's just a painter, has a shit ton of potential, and I know he's gonna blow up. So, uh, and I love talking to him. Every conversation I have with him usually yields uh, great change or reinforcement. So, well, yeah, that's his role. Yeah, and also I'm one of the people on the team that wants to go full time. I just can't afford to do that right now. Um, it's yeah, it's just because like you know, living in Manhattan, I'm in Midtown East. Uh, it's expensive as fuck to live here. So yeah, <laughs> sure it is. Your paintings look awesome, by the way. Thank yeah. you, thank you. I got a it was really cool over here on the wall. Wow, man, that's Holy. nice. That's freaking awesome. Damn. Right. It's different. It's like you, you don't see this is not him just painting a picture. Like this is just like it's different. His head thinks in different terms when it comes to art. Cool. But yeah, this Very is later on. I'm not saying like, hey, tomorrow we're gonna start like music painting this that. Nah, nah. <laughs> there's a ten year old talk of it. Um, but yeah, I would say. Um, so yeah, I, I, beautiful conversation. I really appreciate your guys' time uh, being here and having the patience to hear through the, uh, the details of everything and also for shining a light on what your experience has been. 
Um, but I, I did mention there that you guys want to have a conversation off, uh, off screen. And yeah, I would say figure out how we're going to be interacting together and how you think you're going to be of use to this vision. And how uh, there's anything else you would want to know from me. Uh, after which, we'll set up a conversation with the rest of the co founding team. And then you can come meet the rest of the team on one of the Monday meetings. Sounds good. Yeah, it sounds great. It was awesome to, to, to talk to you guys and, and you know, hear about the vision. It sounds super exciting. And uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to talk more for sure. Yeah, it's really cool that um, you're even at the level that you're at right now, which is further than where Joe and I were at. So um, it's really exciting and it's, it's freaking awesome. So I love it. It's good stuff. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate taking the time today. Yeah, no problem. So, yeah, we'll be in touch. All right. All right. Good. Just uh, let us know. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Joe, uh, how's your wife? Oh, she's good. Thank you. She's she's in a bit of pain, but uh, it, luckily it was nothing like um, you know super bad. It was more like fertility related, kind of like oh. a, like a spur of the moment procedure. But she's doing good. Thank you. All right. Good. Appreciate okay. it. So no rush. Whenever you guys are ready, we're ready to go. Cool. And yeah. uh, oh, we'll Julia, real quick, do you mind? Can we get a copy? Uh, see this report. Can we get a copy of the meeting too? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send awesome. you a link. Thank you. All right. All right. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me do something first. Let me just... Sorry, it's for uh, different reasons. All right. Then. No, never mind. Give me one second. Are you screenshotting? Should we smile? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> For future reference, I need a cover to the for the link that I'm gonna send you. All right, okay, we're good to go. You have a beautiful right. day and the rest of the week. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Thank yeah. you very much for your time. Appreciate Bye. it. Okay, gentlemen. Bye bye. See you guys.